The 1980s was a great time for sports dynasties. We had the New York Islanders and the Edmonton Oilers of the NHL, the LA Lakers and Boston Celtics of the NBA, and the San Francisco 49ers of the NFL. Amid all those dynasties, there was another one. It was a team that made the playoffs 10 out of 12 years, made the final six times and won three straight championships. What makes this even more amazing is that the town's team beat out teams from cities 10 to 100 times its size, operating with much less money and fewer options. The team came from a small hamlet of 100 people in Saskatchewan, a hamlet called Hazlet. And this is the story of the legendary Hazlet Elks baseball team. Before we get into the Hazlet Elks and their story, let's dive back to the story of Hazlet and baseball in the community. Hazlet, located about 45 minutes away from Swift Current, is a small hamlet that had its beginning in the 1920s. Beginning from those early years, the community has maintained a steady population of residents who call the hamlet home. While baseball was first played in the community in the 1920s, the first recorded organized game was played in 1935. By 1938, Hazlet's baseball team was already dominating the region, winning 57 of 64 games and 9 tournaments in total, a sign of things to come. Moving forward, we can't tell the story of the Hazlet Elks without speaking about Larry English. Born in 1948 in Gull Lake, a town located 25 minutes south of Hazlet, English began playing baseball at a young age and would eventually find himself playing in the South River Baseball League. Some of the highlights of his time in the league included throwing a no-hitter, hitting seven home runs in a three-game tournament, and winning the league batting title five years in a row. In 1968, he married Jennifer Jameson and moved to the family farm. Eventually, English began to move into coaching and would coach Team Saskatchewan in both the Canadian Senior Championship and the Canadian Junior Championship. Now we're going to move away from English for a short time and get to the creation of the Elks. After dominating the South River Baseball League and winning three championships in a row from 1979 to 1981, and with realization by English and others that the team was defeating teams from larger communities with American imports, it was decided to ask for admission into the Saskatchewan Major Baseball League. The team was accepted into the league in October of 1981, and managed by English, the team was allowed four American imports due to its size. To prepare for the new season, the community built new bleachers and a new fence for the home team. English also got down to work scouting out players from the United States to play for the team, and we'll get to some of those later. For the team's first game in 1982, 400 people showed up, roughly four times the population of the community. In that first year, the team missed the playoffs, but it would be the last time in a decade that would happen. As the smallest town to ever compete in the league, the team had its work cut out for it, but not only did the Hazlet Elks succeed, they thrived. In 1983, the team made it all the way to the league final before losing. They would do the same in 1984, and in 1985 and 1986, they lost in the semifinals. In 1986, English also began scouting for the Minnesota Twins, something he would do for the next five years. He would win the World Series with the team in 1987. While English would win that championship in the majors, the Hazlet Elks began their epic run of championships. In 1987, 1988, and 1989, the team were league champions. That may not seem like a big deal, but the Elks at the time were defeating teams from much larger communities. Three championships in a row have only happened five other times in league history going back to 1931. The Regina Nationals won from 1932 to 1936, the North Battleford Beavers from 1962 to 1965, the Saskatoon Patrick Liners from 1971 to 1983, the Swift Current Indians from 1996 to 1998, and the Okotoks Dogs from 2007 to 2009. Each of these communities had a population that ran into the thousands and tens of thousands. That means more money and more American imports. Despite this, Hazlet was a dominating force in the league in the 1980s. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end. The team would lose in the playoffs in 1990 and 1991 and make their last trip to the final in 1992. 
In 1993, due to financial difficulties, the team folded and would miss the playoffs for the first time since 1982. Despite the team lasting just over a decade, there would be a lasting impact on the community and all the players who played on the legendary Hazlet Elks. In 2013, the community of Hazlet, in no small part due to the Hazlet Elks, was inducted into the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame. A few major league baseball players would make their way through Hazlet during the heyday of the Elks. The fact that the community attracted so much top talent is because of English and his ability to scout players. And the following is just a few of the players who put on an Elks jersey. Gerald Wagner, who would play in the minor leagues in the United States, finishing with a career of 14 wins and 12 losses. Steve Reed would play from 1992 to 2005 in the majors for nine teams. In 833 games, he had 630 strikeouts and a 49-44 record. Vince Schinholster would be drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs and end up playing for San Bernardino in the minors. Willie Hysaw was drafted by the San Francisco Giants and would play in the minors for Great Falls. Greg Matthews played for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Philadelphia Phillies from 1986 to 1992 and had a record of 28 wins and 33 losses with 251 strikeouts. Kurt Matson would spend his time in the minors playing for Great Falls, Shreveport, and Clinton. Three other players would be scouted and signed with the Hazlet Elks but would not play. These included Corey Snyder, who would play from 1986 to 1994 in the majors hitting 149 home runs, Mark McGuire, and Hall of Fame pitcher Randy Johnson. As for Larry English, he would soon find his way into the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame as a builder. I hope you enjoyed this episode of a small town team that made it big on the provincial stage, and if you did, please give the video a like and a comment. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can reach me at crwbaird at gmail.com or on Twitter at Craig Baird, C-R-A-I-G-B-A-I-R-D, or on Instagram at B-A-I-R-D-O 37. Thanks, and see you next time.